am finally completing my Art Snacks versus Sketchbox challenge tonight. Um, and I decided that since honestly neither box inspired me all that much, I was going to combine the two together. So I did this um, drawing kind of inspired by Marie Antoinette. And I already swatched my Stabilo 88s. Those are some beautiful, vibrant colors. Um, and I inked this with a Sailor Mitso Ida. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give my, um, the Frisket film I recently ordered uh, a try to create a mask over her and then do like a layer of the, the V17. Because I'm not sure I could push V17 back enough to be able to do skin. I'm going to use an alcohol marker for her skin. And then I'm going to watercolor everything else using the Stabilos and add details and accents with my Sketchbox goodies. So this is my first time using uh, like a paper or a tacky frisket. I guess you guys know I just love doing these things on camera. And I can pretty much already see through it. So what I'm going to do is I am I wish I could say I'm going to trace it on the reverse, but I'm not. Doesn't really give instructions. So what I'm going to do is I am going to um, trace the area I want to mask in pencil and then cut it with a knife. And I ought to tape it down first. So some tips on cutting frisket. These sharp scissors that I was trying to use earlier, they're all gummed up and I was really struggling with cutting the frisket. And I was having trouble cutting the frisket with a craft knife as well. But when I switched to some rarely used scissors, and I'm gonna have to clean these because they've got gum on them now from cutting an adhesive. When I switched to some rarely used scissors, I was able to get a much cleaner cut and it was much easier. So. If you, like me, are brand new to frisket, that's definitely something to think about. All right, now let's apply this. All right, it comes off fairly easy. And I purchased low tack, and I probably should have peeled it away. Okay, come on. That's kind of cool. I think I'm going to leave it like that, where it's got like that hint around the hair where it didn't quite hit correctly, except it, uh, well, you know, that, we'll just do it that way. Cause it's going, there's going to be like an overlap over here where it got misaligned, but that might actually look cool. So I'm not really concerned about it. All right, Copic wide time. Actually having that. And boy, I'm glad I did frisket because it is super dark. And just glides over it. Now, some of my edges were not the best. So, um, in the future, I'm going to be more careful when I cut my frisket. But other than that, I am excited already. 
So it's going to take a minute to dry on the plastic, but I think I can use, yeah, I can use my craft knife to help me pick it up. How cool is that? If you were looking for something to help you mask areas when you do alcohol-based marker, Frisket paper seems to be a solution to our problems. So I could start rendering right away if I want to, but I noticed that um, some of my area that wasn't covered by Frisket is starting to kind of smear with the midsole Ida. And the Frisket even comes with some wax paper, which makes it easy to use it as a, um, like a watercolor palette for the, the Stabilos. So I'm just doing a base coat right now, base skin tone, with Copic E51. And I realize her face would be much paler than this but I wanted there to be some, I didn't want it to be all pastel because her hair needs to be pastel. In the background, it isn't pastel, but you know, um, it is kind of like a monotone color, at least for now. I just think the Frisket working with um, alcohol markers is the coolest thing. I'm really excited about that because I'm gonna play around with it. Gotta get better scissors though, or clean off the scissors I have. Some goo gone ought to take the adhesive off of that stuck to the blades. See, I'm already getting some smearing around her eyes, so I need to be very ginger and delicate in doing this. I think I want to do the watercolor bit using the Stabilos. So I'm going to be using, and there's actually nothing to hold these in place. They do a fairly good job of staying where they are in the case due to their hexagonal, hexagonal shape. And let's see if I can find some scrap plastic. That looks like some scrap plastic. And I need a brush pen. But this one doesn't have much water in it, so let me go fill that up. So one of the nice things about both of these boxes, and one reason you as an artist or a crafter or a creator might be interested in these boxes is they force you, especially if you're doing the challenges, they force you to think outside your comfort zone. I probably wouldn't have done a mask like that, especially with Copic, because I've never actually had good results with that technique. Now her hair is gonna be interesting because I wanna do an all over pink. I guess I'll have to work in sections because these don't put down as much ink as the uh, bullet nib ones do. But I'm just using a piece of scrap plastic as um, like a palette to scribble my colors onto and I'm picking them up with a water brush and brushing them on to my paper. And this is Bristol Vellum, so it should be able to handle a little bit of light watercolor. Should be able to handle the markers. Also want to color her lips pink very lightly. Hopefully that'll dry a little lighter than it already is. And I didn't let my line art, did not let my line art dry for 24 hours the way I normally would. So I am treating it kind of gingerly. Oh. If you're interested in seeing Stabilo's used um, to do color line art, you should definitely check out the blog post. I know I'm not using them the way um, the card kind of wanted 
suggested they ought to be used because it was talking very much about like line art and um that's great but i felt like that was kind of like the obvious option right You're, you have these fine liner pins why not use them for line art now I opted not to use them to do the line art on this. I did think about it and I thought it might give a really cool effect, especially once the water is added. But I realized that um, it might show the pencil too much and I didn't want, I didn't want like a dirty looking line art. So I opted to skip it for this one, but I'll have to test it later to see if that's an option sort of looks like a um, like Jim from Jim and the Holograms but I was thinking pink because I also have that pink Posca that I can work in not super sure yet how though another thing about these challenges is um, I like kind of doing them by the seat of my pants uh, so things definitely go wrong sometimes and uh, I just have to deal with it probably doesn't give people who are only tuning in for that the most confidence in my abilities that's okay it's fun and it's different from what I normally do, which tends to be very planned out, at least off camera. Now the pink dried pretty dark, um, darker than I expected. So for her cheeks and stuff, I'm going to have to add more water I like how cloud like her hair is looking right now and the Copic sketch was not included in my sketch box that was from my own personal collection I just uh, sometimes I like to augment the challenges with my own supplies because they can leave me feeling a little boxed in huh. oh, oh, I need a bad funny subscription box boxed in so when you're laying down more ink from the Stabilo 88s you don't want to do it in the same spot you already laid down ink and picked up with your water brush because that's going to have a lot of water still on it. All right, not getting much layering, so it is time to move on. And I check these things by touching them with my fingertip to see how dry they are. Got a lot of pink in this. These are definitely very saturated colors that retain a lot of their power even after uh, they've been watered down and allowed to dry. So as a watercolor tool, you have to be kind of careful. So I'm finding they have a tendency to kind of get away from me. Activated. Not really. They can be lifted out a little bit, but not a whole lot. They aren't actual 
watercolors, but this is kind of a neat way to carry a whole watercolor kit in your pocket. All right, purple for her hair bows. So I'm gonna use a little bit of that purple under her chin, under her blah, under her uh, lips, and a little bit underneath her chin, since it's a little more subdued than what I was putting down, which is very hot for a um a purple. So, so far I'm pretty pleased with it. It's turning out pretty cute. Very Jim and the Holograms kind of piece. And probably different from what you guys were expecting, so hopefully. It can become too easy to be a one-trick pony and always do the same sort of techniques. So these Stabilo 88s are pretty fun for watercolor. I think their larger bullet nib markers are a little bit easier to use for this technique. You just get more to work with um, in terms of like ink on paper but that's not really <laughs> that's not really a complaint it's just an observation like if you're interested in this sort of technique for your own work I think the bigger tips make it a little bit easier to use and they come in fun bright colors so as an art supply on their own, I like them. Like, these are pretty fun. I look forward to doing some color, figuring out some ways to do color line art. I'm probably gonna have to pull out my light box because I don't want it to, I don't want my pencil lead to contaminate what I'm doing and I don't want my non-photo blue lead to uh, influence the colors. And this is working really well for the sort of loose, uh, less rendered coloring style I'm using. It really works well for her hair. Sometimes when I when I go less rendered it looks really bad. And this is, I mean, such a simple technique. All you really need is like a piece of just garbage throwaway plastic. Um, some paper that can stand up to marker and watercolor a water brush and this set plus like a couple of markers I guess if you want to use markers you don't even have to use markers and these were the pins sent to me in Sketchbox along with a Copic wide so it would have been nice to see them just include uh, like maybe two other things two other standalone things maybe um maybe like some paper or like a different type of inking supply because um just monetarily speaking this isn't really a complete this isn't really my money's worth like as fun as this is um i have a studio full of supplies i don't necessarily need their box so they need to in my opinion include some extra things that really make the box pop. Now, if they had included like um, a link to a tutorial they'd commissioned on some technique that isn't a commonly used technique for these markers, um, that would have added value in my opinion and it would have given an artist work and I'm always excited about that. So that would have made these a little more worth it to me, a little easier to recommend. I mean, my total, the total value of the products they included was $18, and you pay $25 plus $5 shipping every month. 
so um, it just doesn't really seem like a fair but I've gone over that in the unboxing video um, and I'll talk about it on the blog post as well so if you're interested in that kind of content please check out my blog please check out our other videos And then another nice thing about this plastic palette is um, you can like go back and collect all of the little scraps of ink off of it, mix colors too, if you want. Although that doesn't really have anything to do with uh, what they sent me and more it has to do with my garbage digging abilities. So we're letting this dry and then it'll be time to introduce a few of our Art Snacks goodies. Um, I have an acrylic paint pen. And I'm kind of curious, I'm going to do a test over here where y'all almost can't see it. Okay, that's the... V17. Yeah, it's like, it's a good match. Like, it's surprising. I wonder if these companies work together because my brilliant purple is this pretty much the same color as V17. And I wonder if my Unipasca, yeah, it's like almost the same color as her hair, but fortunately it's a little bit darker. So we need to figure out something to do with the Art Snacks goodies. Sort of watering it down and dragging it so that, I mean, it's really, it's really tacky. I'm like making the heart look like it's dripping. I'm so tacky. Now the fine nibs, the, um, the pin type nibs, they don't drag on the paper the way the bullet nibs do, so they actually work a little bit better on this paper than the bullet nibs did when I tried them out a while back. But they're also not nearly as opaque as the regular, like the larger Posca sizes. I mean, I can go back over it a couple of times because Poscas work well with layering. That's not really the issue. I'm also just kind of scribbling too because I want to put down as much paint as I can so I have the most to work with. Wait, so I have, as <laughs> I have enough to work with is really what I wanted to say, the most to work with. Yeah, if you want opacity once you've blended it out, at least on this, um, like a dark, this dark violet, you're going to need to go over it a couple times. Reminds me of doodling hearts all over my binder as a kid. I'd get the cheapest binders I could so I could draw all over them, which is, I think, what everybody did. Um, but my parents would have killed me if I'd like talked them into an expensive, overpriced binder and then like drew all over it not killed me kill me but would have never bought me a nice binder again and it seems like they're drawing a little more opaque and the Posca writes very smooth there's no dragging there's no scraping it's actually fun to doodle with and it is water soluble so that's what you see me doing So if you're an artist who um, you should pro who should probably play more and just doesn't for whatever reason, um, that is something these subscription boxes have been good for for me. 
is um, I definitely play around a lot more with these boxes than I would otherwise do. And play is good. You learn new skills and it blows off steam, so that is a benefit to an art subscription box. I would not recommend getting these as like a way to stock a studio because they're expensive for that. And just wandering an art supply store and picking up a couple of things every time you go is a cheaper way of stocking a studio. And you're going to end up with more stuff you actually like. So I guess that makes me wonder who is who is the the audience for boxes like these? Um, is it an artist who's you know looking to mix things up a little? Is it um, somebody who's young and doesn't yet have a collection of supplies? Do these boxes know who their audiences are? Sometimes I get a little persnickety and I, I, I assume, they say they, both Art Snacks and Sketchbox say they, they do research and testing. Um, but sometimes the stuff they send me is so basic that I'm just, I really have to wonder whether or not that's true. Like who, who are your testers? Are they artists who have started testing for you, or are they just people you hired who are like, yeah, I could do that? I don't know. Um, I mean, if they started really, if either box, uh, Sketchbox or Art Snack, started releasing videos, like tutorial videos, or inside their, um, their office, or inside their studio, like that would give us some insight and it would also add some value to these boxes. And it might also help generate an audience. Um, see, I'm having so much fun with this that I almost was like, yeah, both of these are good boxes. But the, the fact of the matter is, Sketchbox was overpriced this month, and Art Snacks fell kind of all over the place, you know? Like, I couldn't think of anything I could do with what they'd sent me without, like, massively augmenting it. And last month, you know, I had to... I augmented that box as well with my own supplies. And, um... Originally, I thought the Art Snacks Challenge was supposed to be you only create things with the, the materials they sent you. Um, but I'm seeing more and more people enter the challenge with, like, multimedia pieces that include other supplies. So I, I wonder if that's, like, if they've moved their goal away from that. I mean, they never, they never promised to send a box that was, like, a one-stop shop sort of the way... Oh, there's another art subscription service that is in either of these boxes that, like, promises a coherent whole. So they have, like, a lesson for you to do, and it comes with the paper, and it comes with the pins, and the yada, yada, yada. Um, art Snacks never promised that, and I'm pretty sure Sketchbox never promised that. Um, but it was something I wanted to see. I, I wanted to see themes for Art Snacks because it just, sometimes it feels all over the place. Even just color themes. Um, a different color a month or like I don't know one month is all iridescent pr products or um, one month is all um, like gold that would add value and interest for me as a creator because um, I would be more invested in participating in the project I think I think I would be more in invested. I like theme things though, like that's a personal like of mine. Weakness, a personal weakness. I have an affinity for themed, themed boxes, themed sets.
or pick animals, right? So like panda bear would be uh, black and white. So it would be different white inks, different black inks, black paper, black, like, cause um, Strathmore now has a black sketch paper, right? Or I don't know, uh, working in the negative. So you are using white on black. All right, now that you're eaten from my art snacks. At the end of the day, as somebody who has an obsession with art supplies and making art and making pieces and talking to you guys and showing you guys stuff. I mean, I've been doing I've been doing the blog for years and I've been doing the YouTube for a, a little while. Um maybe not consecutive consecutively, but definitely for at least a year if you put everything together. Um, I have no desire <laughs> to see either company disappear. I don't, I don't want to put them out of business. I don't want them to go out of business. I want them to succeed because I think, I think the initial goal, the core sentiment is a really interesting one. But I think both companies need to decide who their audience is. Is it crafters? Is it artists? And then tailor, is it, or is it students? And then tailor the supplies they include to that audience. And that might mean losing the general crowd, but I don't know how much they either, either box appeals to the general crowd. Um, because a lot of the comments I'm getting on my videos are things like, well, I was thinking about getting this box, but after seeing what was inside of it, I, I opted not to. I get that a lot where people, um, thank me for unboxing it because it saved them some money. So they're not seeing Potential customers aren't seeing something They're they're missing something that they're looking for and I don't I can tell you what I want But I can't tell you what your average customer is going to want But if your average customer is walking away Because they've seen an unboxing and they don't like what they see um, That should tell you something if you're getting customers um, primarily because you they thought you were offering something different than what you were offering, um, you know you might you might want to poll some of those people and see what they would be interested in. I bet though a lot of them would say just like I said that they would be interested in seeing tutorials for these specific for the things included in the boxes because. Um, that just seems like a really great way to add value without adding a lot of money to each box and um, without adding weight, which I'm sure is a concern for both companies. They, they have to keep what they send at a certain weight because, you know, they don't want to lose money on the shipping. So, I mean, you just have to pay a tutorial, or I'm sure there is something you can offer an artist. I mean, for me, for a tutorial, it really depends on how in-depth you're looking. If you want, like, a full piece, it, like, me to demonstrate how to do a full piece with the materials, or whether you just want me to demonstrate a technique. Well, a technique's going to take a lot less time, so it's going to cost whoever I'm doing the tutorial for, it's going to cost them a lot less money. Um... But if they commissioned me to do a full tutorial, then they own the rights. I would sell them the rights to the piece so they could use it for whatever promotional material they wanted. And then it also depends on um, whether or not I'm allowed to use outside materials or I can only create something with what's included in the box and, like, some paper. And that's just me. I mean, there are thousands of other artists out on YouTube, on DeviantArt, on Twitter, on Tumblr for sure, on Instagram, like, you are not at a loss to find artists. They are, a, they abound, and um, many of them are looking for work or looking to trade. Um, you just have to try, and it would also increase your presence in the artist community instead of, like, 
treating being on your box, Sketchbox, like it's such an honor. You're using people's art to promote your product, but the compensation isn't really fair for their time. And I know, I know they're volunteering for it, but if you were paying people for tutorials or for the art, um, you would have a better rapport with artists. We, you would not only be someone to whom we give our money, but you would be seen as an employer. And that is a, there's a, artists have a lot of loyalty. Like, um, if you are a good employer, if you treat us fairly, if you pay us when you say you're gonna pay us, we have a lot of love for you because we're so used to having to fight with people over dumb stuff like money and paying on time and whether our work is worth something. And I, you know, you can't, you can't I can't pay my landlady in sketch boxes. I can't pay my landlady in blog posts that I've written, which is why I push the Patreon. Um, because I have bills to pay too, same as anybody else. Um, and the things I create, they have value, they have, they have meaning. So I think, um, I personally think that if companies were to start soliciting artists by um, offering them paying work, that would help. Too. And the same goes for Art Snacks. I know they have their own in-house artists, but they are also really reliant on people entering the Art Snacks Challenge every month to help generate buzz and to help generate new pieces. And I know, I know that's smart. I know that's good marketing. Like I'm not, I'm not sneering at that decision. I just think also offering employment, especially freelance opportunities, would garner additional engagement and additional loyalty. All right, so I'm going to pull out a white Posca from my big set and add some highlights. Oh, I really wanna fix those hearts at the top too. So I'm gonna do that with a big rose Posca. And um, I'm sure some of you guys are thinking those companies don't owe artists that. And they don't. It's not, it's not owed. Um, I am just brainstorming ways to help both boxes find their niche, uh, both boxes be less in competition with one another, both boxes add additional value to their service without necessarily incurring a whole lot of additional costs. And it would also be a lot easier for me to recommend either box if either box had some sort of program like that. Right now, I sometimes struggle to recommend either of the boxes. And I know that's what a lot of you guys are watching for. Which one should I subscribe to? I got money burning a hole in my pocket. I'm going to buy a subscription box one way or the other. Just tell me which one I ought to do. I know because I was the same way. And sometimes it's really hard for me to say that because it's like after I've gotten the box and after the uh, excitement of disemboweling said box is sort of passed, I'm left thinking that was that was twenty dollars plus thirty dollars, fifty dollars that I could have I could have gone to Jerry's this month and I could have just bought. Uh, 50 bucks worth of any product I've never tried before. And I could have gotten more for my, I could have gotten more products. I could have gone to Plaza and caught a sale and gotten way more for my money. I could have gone to Michael's and used coupons and have gotten way more for my money. So without those like added value sort of things, it makes it difficult to recommend these boxes. And I've said this in prior videos, my only loyalty lies to my fellow artists.
people get mad at us on Tumblr for not drawing their stuff. Oh, we must not be their friend. I mean, like, all kinds of crazy stuff that you wouldn't do to any other profession. Oh, but we do it for love, so, you know, like, that love should be fulfilling. And, like, it was fulfilling when I was 19. I, I would have done it for free, but I'm turning 30 this year, and, uh, it's time to start making ends meet, and I want it to be from this thing I love. Same way a doctor who is passionate about what they do. And I say this because I am not that I have anyone's permission, but I'm kind of speaking for other artists too when I say this. You know, I it breaks my heart seeing my peers get treated this way, and it breaks my heart being treated this way, and I want better. I want better for myself and for them. All right, I got to I got to quit nitpicking at this. So this is my March art snacks and sketch box challenge plus a bunch of other stuff. I'm going to pile on the supplies that I used. Use them from both boxes so it doesn't count for either box, I suppose. Um, I had a lot of fun painting with the Stabilos. I will probably end up carrying them around and uh, trying to watercolor with them and then being disappointed because I'll be trying to do it too quickly and uh, it'll turn into a mess, but that's not their fault, that's my fault. Uh, I, so I really look forward to playing with them and um, I have had a set in my Amazon art supplies to test wish list for a while. I'm also glad Sketchbox included a Copic Y because I think these are great. I want to see more artists use them, especially if you use Frisket. It makes masking so easy. Um, so these two things are fine, but we're still under 25. So Sketchbox, you really need to up your game. Um, art snacks. This month, my box total was 15.76 for art snacks, which means that art snacks was a better value for what I'm paying per box than Sketchbox because Sketchbox was like 18, 18.44. So we're two, Sketchbox is $2 short of that $20 sweet spot. Last month, Art Snacks was a little light, but this month they are good and January they were good. So, um, and, and they sent a sample uh, that wasn't included in the price. And this is probably worth 75 cents. It's not a whole lot of paper. That's like bonus for them. That's land app. Um, I did feel like this month Art Snacks was really all over the place. Um, they sent me a repeat from a couple years ago down to the same color. I really like the KUM pencil sharpener they sent though. That thing was that thing is pretty cool, and it's now living with my figure drawing pencils. So. That's that's neat. I, I haven't seen those around and I go to art stores like once every two weeks I'm always if it's not Jerry's it's Plaza if it's not Plaza it's Michael's I'm like at an art supply store all the time I'm always looking um, so I thought that was cool because I haven't seen that around I thought the Posca find was cool uh, and personal part of that is biased because I'm starting to kind of get into paint liner paint liner pins um, but part of it was also, you know, I've already got the big set of Poscas, the, the, the medium tips. So it's cool to have this and it was cool to get the Zig Poster Man. Um, but that said, it was still like media all over the board. There's an acrylic marker, there's color pencils, there's a Posca, there's some render paper, there's a pencil sharpener. You know, it's hard to think of something to do with that. With these, I could think of things to do with these. Just with nothing else but a sheet of paper, I could think of things to do with these. So, um, as of right this minute, I can't give a final verdict. Um, all I can give you is the prices. Uh, I think when you think about the material cost, art snacks, still closer to that target goal of $5 under total cost, including shipping, um, than Sketchbox was. Art Snacks also include, they included more unique things. Like I've never seen these open stock in my art stores. 
Now, Nashville, not exactly the biggest center for art, but we have a few. Never seen these in, in stores. I've seen these in stores, but they're always behind glass. Um, I've never seen these open stock in Nashville. Um, I have seen these in open stock in Nashville, but I wouldn't have picked them up because I'm not much of a pencil person. Uh, the Kohenor sharpener that I showed you in the prior videos, never seen that in Nashville. So that's like three products that I I don't see in the wild. Whereas, see these every time I go to an art store, see these all the time on Amazon, see them at Staples, see them at Walmart. Like they're not they're not unique. They're not hard to find. And I think part of paying for an art subscription service is the fact that they might have access to things I, as a single person, don't have access to. They can write to companies and they stand a better chance at working out deals for bulk pricing. They stand a better chance at working out deals for re early release or special edition. Um, so it seems like Art Snacks is trying, try, is trying, in my opinion, trying harder than Sketchbox. If you enjoyed this video, and you haven't seen the other videos for March for Art Snacks versus Sketchbox, please watch those. Um, if you like those, you should watch February's and January's. I have a playlist for these things. And uh, read the blog because the blog is like a written version of my YouTube, except I do more research for it and I'm more serious on there. If you like my video, hit like because it helps me out. Show your friends, show your mom, show your dad, show your dog, show everybody. Um, sit through 30 seconds of an ad so I can get, get a little bit of money. Consider subscribing to my channel if you like this stuff. And if you super duper like this stuff and you've liked my stuff for a long time, or maybe a short time, but you like it with the passion of a fiery burning sun, why don't you check out my Patreon? Only if you want to. It is totally optional. I don't hold content hostage. Um, without having warned you guys way in advance that that was going to happen. The Patreon allows me to do things like take requests for, um, like, what I do for my Art Snacks Sketchbox. Arts, yeah, 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 I'm getting it right now. Ha, I've been practicing in secret. Uh, my Art Snacks versus Sketchbox Challenge. You will get to pick, you'll get some say in the things I do for my field tests. You'll get some say in the sort of things I review. You'll definitely be part of giveaways and all kinds of good stuff. And if we raise enough money, I'm gonna put my comics up for a digital download so you can go read that. It's like free comics. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.